Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Uh, welcome. This is a YouTube exclusive video, and uh, obviously for my subscribers as well. Uh, not part of TradingView. Um, so let's go over what he says, because I think this is important. So let's let's start. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is Wednesday, January nineteenth. Another big down day in the markets. Not big percentage wise, but. I thought we'd see a rebound today. The market sold off. Uh, we are still in support levels. First of all, there's no support levels. Forget, forget about support and resistance. So. Based on what I like to look at, which are dealer positions in the futures, but... Why does he like dealer positions in the futures? Anybody? Anybody to make it seem like he's doing some extra kind of special analysis? As if... That's going to work, <laughs> right? It's, it's that, remember, when people are talking, they're trying to boost themselves up. They're trying to make it f seem as if they're doing something that you're not, and they have access to magical, you know, little things and crystal balls, and, you know, if it worked, we would all be sitting there looking at dealers, Right? And their positions and we would all be rich doesn't work same thing with support um we got to see the the thing the thing i want to talk about here really is what's going on with the fiscal situation because that's starting to look a little a little tenuous i have to say what yesterday well let me just start off by saying uh, the deficit so far for January, the monthly deficit for January, is down to a paltry 1.3 billion. So what we're nothing like a couple of down days in the market <laughs> to, to panic MMTers. It's amazing. Nothing like a couple of down days, and all of a sudden, oh, we're running surpluses. That's the reason. <laughs> we have a 7% inflation problem. And now we're running surpluses. And because of those surpluses, well, the markets are going down. Can anybody really believe this crap? I mean, anybody that understands how real macroeconomics works, how markets actually work, you can't believe this stuff. It's comical. It's silly. It's stupid. But remember, they're trying to make it seem as if they know something you don't and since you don't know they can say any kind of stupid thing they want to make it look like they know more than what they do you know we're three quarters of the way through January the deficit for the month is 1.3 billion and if you extrapolate that out for 12 months I mean what you're talking about a 15 billion dollar deficit when last year we had a three trillion dollar deficit now it's not going to be a 15 billion dollar i mean look basically for the month of january right now we're running a, the government's running a balanced budget now a lot of people might be saying yeah that's a great thing that's not a great thing remember that it's a very good thing not great it's a very good thing Remember, MMT themselves tell you that inflation is the constraint. So when we are constraining, they don't like it. <laughs> it's, it's fucking like, uh, you, you want to pull your hair out because they're talking in gibberish. So the only reason they ever said inflation is a constraint was not because they actually meant it. It's just that everybody was telling them, look, you know, what you're saying, just keep printing, 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 printing money is going to cause inflation. And they were like, oh, no, no, no. They had to defend themselves. So they said, well, you know, inflation is a constraint. And then they'll tell you, well, no, no, we don't, we don't want to run a balanced budget. We don't want a surplus. Let's take a moment here and talk about what is a surplus. In order for us to run a real surplus we would have to pay down 
the bonds. Okay. You would have to literally pay off, or let, let me rephrase that, either pay, pay down the, the bonds, buy them back, or let them mature. That's the only two ways you can earn a surplus. Uh, you think that's going to happen based on three weeks worth of data? And this data, he goes and takes it off the daily treasury statement. It's a, as if, you know, what What does that mean? It means nothing. It means that I spent less last three weeks, and that happens all the time. They spend more, then they spend less, then they spend more, then they spend less. Doesn't even make sense. So, nothing like a couple of down days to panic a bunch of MMTers. And not only MMTers. Remember, uh, everybody wants to own this now. Everybody has to spin it in the way they want to spin it. Just like they spin inflation. Oh, it's transitory. Oh, it's supply chain. Oh, you know, when you look at the monthly year-over-year data, it's going to go away. Right? Everybody's going to spin it. Remember, don't fall for this stuff. Why do we have inflation? (laughs) <laughs> more money than goods and services. That's it. Same money, more money, sorry, chasing the same amount of goods and services. It's not complicated. <laughs> it's not rocket science. You cannot sit on a couch, somebody gives you money, you go out, you express that demand, and then expect things to work properly. That's not going to work. Of course, you're going to have some supply chains. Some. Not all. Some is not enough to create 7% inflation. Okay? It's not enough. So anyway, let's continue. Swimming pool analogy. I mean, that that water now, I mean, you're not even like six inches or a foot below the, 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 you know, the top of the pool. You're, You're down at the bottom of the pool. There's like no water left. There's like a little tiny you know, a sheet of water at the very bottom of the pool, and, and that's going to be, at this rate, it's going to go out fast. Where's the water? It's flowing to the government side, which means it just, it goes nowhere. It disappears. Now, it's flowing to the government side. What? The last time that it, it went to the, it flowed, quote-unquote, to the government side, and this is from Ed- Edward Delzio. He's the one that discovered this was not in 2000, it was in 1957. 1957 was the last time that it flowed to the government. Because that's the only time, or the only time since, where uh, the bonds were actually fewer the following year. This is not flowing (laughs) to the, it's not flowing to the government side. You have to reduce the bonds. And that hasn't happened since 1957. So he's coming out talking all this nonsense, this craziness, three weeks into a new year. Wow. Where is he setting up with this? What do you think he's setting up with it? He's trying to make excuses why he missed this top. He's trying to make excuses why the market is going down why he never saw it coming okay he's always hedging his bets he's always flip-flopping as to what he's saying okay remember people are going to spin it uh, yesterday the 18th was a big tax day the government took in 66 billion of taxes so that kind of skewed the deficit but even so the trend is not i mean it's not a healthy trend you know when you're talking about net tr- not a healthy trend all right, let's go back in time in world history, right? For thousands of years, we weren't necessarily running deficits all the time in order for us to keep the economy going, right? How, how have we gone from sanity to insanity where we now believe that the only way we can have a good economy is by deficit spending more than what our productive output is, and if we don't, well, fuck, we're screwed. How do we end up here? 
10 years ago, they were saying the opposite. We should have deflation. That deflation was the way to prosperity. You can't have deflation to prosperity. You can't have less and less money in the, uh, in the economy uh, and, and grow the economy at the same time. That doesn't even make sense because you have more goods and services, okay, and then fewer and fewer dollars to express that uh, demand. Well, why would anybody go and create more things um, when they're going to be penalized because they're going to make less and less money on every new widget that they produce? Okay, so they they go from one extreme to the other, and they say, well, if we're not doing A, then you know, then we're deflating B, then we're going to collapse. You can't have it both ways. It's not <laughs> it's not the way it works. There's a happy medium <laughs> that nobody's looking at. But we're all conditioned now to believe that we need deficits and deficits and deficits and deficits. And it's wrong. It's not the way it works. He's he's crazy. And I can't believe that he got, I don't know, 113 likes on this video. What does that tell you? There's a, at least 113 people that believe that if we don't deficit spend, well, we're screwed. Wow. Wow. I wish we, we ran a balanced budget, especially during inflation. I do. So we can tame inflation. Remember, how do we get here to inflation? <laughs> $8 trillion over two years. Right? $8 trillion. Endless uh, lending programs. ZERP. Zero interest rate policy. QE. Okay? Yeah. That's how we got inflation. And now he doesn't like it. Now he wants more deficits. It's like trying to use gasoline to put out a fire. It doesn't even make sense. It's stupid. Transfers to the non-government, to the economy. Like, that is shrinking fast. And that is, that is just a, a, uh, a reduction in the quantity of financial assets being transferred to the non-government, to the economy. I mean, it's, you know, if you think about that as um, lubricant for the economy, right? Like lubricant for your car, if you, got a, if you got an oil leak and you're running that engine, I mean, that's gonna seize up. That's a problem, man. That is a big, big problem. Now, you know, I've been talking about, there, there's an offset to this, which is bank credit. And, you know, and we're kind of at a crossroads right now, I have to say, and, you know, uh, let me preface this whole thing by saying that, you know, this could be like a fundamental shift in the economic environment that we have been in now for a long time, okay? Um, and not in a good way. All right, let me pause here. All right. So, labor force participation, okay? Employed as a, a percentage of population. That's the black line here. It's been going sideways. Deficits, on the other hand, are increasing. Did it create more jobs? M meaning more people working as a percentage of population. Answer is no. It didn't work this time, it didn't work last time, it didn't work the time before that. So why are we sitting here talking about deficits, how, oh, it's going to seize up the engine and lubricant and whatever. Let's go back in time here. Low deficits, proportional to economic growth, and look what happened to labor force employed as a percentage of population. It was rising. Now, there's more to it. Obviously, women came in the workforce and blah, 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 and whatever. Not the point, okay? Deficits are not... So, think of it like this. There's a pen that you and I are bidding for. You have $100, I have $100. The most that that pen can go for is $100. If the government gave us each an additional $100, the most that that pen can go for an auction between you and I would be $200. You're not getting more pens because the
the government printed up another hundred dollars and gave it to you. You're getting the same pen. You're just gonna pay two hundred for it instead of a hundred. Okay. There's not more people working. Deficits don't work. Economies econ- recover when the economies recover. Let's take a look at real GDP growth. Okay, that's inflation. Adju- that's what real means, inflation adjusted. We were at a $296 billion worth of economic growth in two years for $8 trillion. Deficits don't work. Sorry, what engine seizing up? I don't know what he's talking about. The engine seized up a long time back. And guess what? The lubricant didn't work. The oil didn't work. The black line is public debt. It has surpassed GDP, personal income, disposable income. And now, God forbid that this starts to roll over, that what? Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, uh, Personal uh, income is not going to rise. GDP is not going to rise. Disposable income is not going to rise. Well, it didn't rise when it should have rose, according to him, which was massive deficits and public debt. Right? That is a lot of dough to be given to the non-government, from government, according to them. Now he's trying to talk about, well, you know, it could be offset by, by private debt. Well, hold on there. Hold on. If you understand MMT, MMT will tell you that private debt doesn't matter. It's horizontal money. Uh, it all equals to zero. The only thing that matters are deficits. So he's trying now, okay, to kind of mush these two uh, cognitive dissonance ideas together. <laughs> Just listen to it. It's it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. And and by the way, um, household debt is somewhere down here, right? Private debt is exactly where it should be. Always it has been below um, personal income, uh, disposable income, uh, GDP, and public debt. So let's listen. Now, I've been talking about bank credit and the expansion in bank credit, which is an offset to the shrinkage in the government deficit. And again, we're almost in budget balance. And when you, by the way, you heard that here first. And when you read about that in the next couple of weeks, because there, it'll be reported that the, December, uh, the January budget maybe was a surplus and everyone's going to be going, yeah, and you know, people are going to be padding. Biden on the back saying, look at the good job he made. And and Jen Psaki, his spokesperson, will be going out there and saying, hey, we balanced the budget for Jen. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. So (laughs) Deficits are not a good thing. I just showed you why. Just remember you heard that here first. I mean, a balanced budget is a reduction in... The non-governments drinking water before financial balances. It all flows to the government. And I've been talking about this, how the way things are set up, you know, in a downturn, in an economic downturn, we have automatic stabilizers like Social Security and unemployment benefits and food stamps and Medicare and Medicaid and veterans benefits and disability and all these things that kick in and they expand automatically as people lose their jobs and they you know have to seek help from these programs so that's like a safety net under the economy but it works the inverse way as the economy grows yeah it works in an inverse way which is good because people are actually working that's a good thing that's what you want to happen (laughs) that's why it works in inverse and that's why you have more tax revenues, okay? At some point, the tax collections start to exceed this, the flow of spending, right? That's that, that water pipe going into the pool. The water's going into the pool, but it's draining out 
a lot faster than it's going into the pool. And now it's draining out a lot, lot faster than it's going into the pool. You got that little tiny sheet of water at the bottom of the pool, which. So, again, the double talk. Uh, it's the deficits, right? And then really, it's not the deficits now. Because we just showed you that, uh, and he even admitted it himself, that credit is starting to rise. Right? So it's offsetting it. But it's not really offsetting it because now we're back to deficits offsetting it. Like, I don't understand what he's talking about. He doesn't understand what he's talking about. And to a layman who, who's not trained or understands MMT and, and, and macroeconomics, and he's flip-flopping all over the fucking place, double-talking, and confusing people. And he, they think that he's actually saying something. He's not saying anything. Which that is about to go down the drain too. And what happens? The banks step in, they offer credit. Uh, uh, one of my subscribers even told me that, Mike, anecdotally, I see that because I'm getting tons and tons of, you know, new credit card offers in the mail and stuff like that. You might be seeing that too. You know, I'm seeing it too. Anecdotally. Who cares about anecdotally? That's, that's like Logan going out to his front door, opening up and saying, oh, look, there's no COVID out there. Okay, everything is fine. And making fun of COVID when it was uh, uh, first starting off. Oh, it's a liberal hoax. Oh, it's just the flu. Oh, it's nothing. Ha, ha, ha. Two years later, we're all screwed up. Everybody. Right? But these experts, they love to, you know, dumb shit down to, like, ridiculousness. <laughs> if that's a word. And uh, it's, 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 it's painful for me to watch these things. That's why I don't watch them. But somebody gave it to me and I'm going to comment on it. But the problem is, that's only a temporary fix, if you want to call it that. Again, that's not the same as, you know, getting a government check or something where the money you put in your pocket, it's yours. Your balance has gone up. There's no, uh, you know, offsetting liability to that. That's your money. I mean, a bank credit, there's only so far you can go. Now, I've been saying that. Uh, debt service burdens, in other words, the, the difficulty or the, 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 the ease of satisfying that monthly payment of your mortgage, of your insurance, of your rental costs, of this, this nature, that is at a pretty low level. I said that's about a 9% of disposable income. In 2007, it was at 13% of disposable income. But as, as someone said here, they put up a comment, and they're right, whoever that person was, they said that, you know, those debt service burdens can rise quickly, especially now if the Fed is going to raise interest rates and if credit bank credit is expanding rapidly. So the ability of bank credit to sustain the economic expansion is limited, all right? It's limited. Whereas the government's ability to sustain it is only limited by the availability of real assets, real resources, you know, labor, natural resources, you know, that, that sort of stuff. It's not fine. <laughs> you know why he's going? Because he's choking on his own bullshit. Okay. He's choking on his own bullshit. Well, credit is rising, you know, they can be offset. Well, not really, it's limited. Well, it's about the, the disposable income percentage of the servicing payments, uh, but it's really the deficits, but not really. It can be offset, by, but not really. Yeah, he's flip-flopping. He's flip-flopping all over the place. Look, go in your wallet. Pull out a dollar or ten dollars, twenty dollars, whatever. Do you know if that's a um, a bank created dollar or a deficit dollar? You won't know the difference. Doesn't make a difference. All money is money. How it's created doesn't matter. How it gets pumped into the economy doesn't matter. Okay. And when you're sitting here again, flip flopping and saying, "Well, you know, we're limited to the real resources, labor." products or whatever he's saying well yeah that's why you, well, that's why we have seven percent inflation we printed too much 
and now you're telling me surpluses are no good. <laughs> but it can be offset by banks, but not really because deficits are the ones, because it's just like free money. Well, yeah, free money is what created inflation. He doesn't know what he's talking about at all. At all. Neither does MMT. Neither do people that subscribe to this kind of idea of incubator economists that, hey, deficits are going to stimulate the economy. $8 trillion, you got $296 billion worth of economic growth. Horrible return on investment. Horrible return on investment. And we're sitting here listening to this garbage. To this know-nothing. And this guy was on Fox. Okay. Financially limited, but it's limited in the sense of, of real assets. Um, so... I mean, we could be at, we're, I don't know, I don't think we could be. We are at a crossroads right here. I think that bank credit will float the economy for a while. But unless this fiscal situation is addressed, and I don't know, I, I mean, politically, I mean, I, you know, the, the Democrats are stymied. They can't pass anything. Uh, this economy could be in serious trouble, you know, several months down the road, if not sooner, when the Fed starts hiking interest rates. I mean, we're looking at a problem here, folks. And I have to be honest, like, th this developed very quickly. Like, I didn't see this developing, at least the Fed. <laughs> this developed really quickly. Uh, duh, yeah. <laughs> you missed the top, brother. Okay, you missed the top, and now you're trying to play catch up, and you're coming up with all sorts of, I don't know, weird, uh, witch doctor kind of fuckery, weird stuff. Uh, it's painful. Oof. All right. So let's just clear this up once and for all. On September 30th was the last uh, uh, fiscal day for uh, the government's checkbook. And they close their books on September 30th. October 1st is the new year. And if you come down, and this is w on, the, on the right side is all the spending, the withdrawals, the left side is all the deposits, blah, blah, blah. If you come down to table 3C, you're going to see that the previous year, it was the, the deficit was $26.9 trillion. And on the 30th of 2021, September 2021, it was $28.4 trillion. Okay? Now I'm going to take you to today. And this is January 20th, 2022, was the last time they reported. And we'll go right back down. Table 3C. We closed out the year 2021. 28.4 trillion. We're going to go over here. We're going to take a nice little look. Okay. Statutory debt limit is 31.38 trillion. And right now we are 29.839 trillion. This number is bigger than this number. Okay. We're not running a surplus. We're not even close to running a surplus. And please do pay attention to the closing balance today. As of today, $29.839 trillion. That's $1.4 plus trillion dollars thus far this year, from October 1st to today. What surplus is he talking about? Is he high? Is he smoking crack? I, I don't know, but... Uh, Nobody should be paying attention to this garbage. Okay? As I've shown you um, on Trading View, and I don't know if you follow me there, um, the S&P 500 relative to the money supply uh, started to rise in the 80s. And then it got really, really, really euphoric. It got way out of control. When? In 2000. And since then, one, two, three, moved down, and has been rising ever since then. 
and I pointed out that look, you this this is the red zone right in here. This is the red zone. Prices are excessive. They're entering that area. Okay, the red zone. They're excessive. Um, fail, fail, fail. Okay, every time you get up here, it's like a wall. It fails. Doesn't mean you can't go higher. You can do whatever you want. I don't have a crystal ball. But I did point this out and I said, look, you know, we're, we're right up against this area here. Let me switch this to log so you can see it better. Okay. The only thing deficits are good for and money supply is to boost up asset prices. Not everyday people's lives. Okay. And sure enough, look what happened. Look what happened. Big drop. Or as Donald Trump would say, big, big drop. <laughs> right? So, nothing like a couple of down days in the stock market to freak out MMTers. Now everybody wants to own it. I didn't see it coming. It's not going to last. Buy the dip. You've been buying the dip for 10 years, therefore you should buy it for the next 10 years. And it's not working out for them. Now they're telling you, oh, it's the surpluses, even though we're running a $1.4 trillion deficit. It's the surpluses. It's the surpluses. Lies. Incoherent nonsense. Silliness. I showed you the Fed's, fu Fed's fund rate. Okay. Um, inflation adjusted in real terms. We've never, never been this low. Okay. It's, it's, it's out of control. This is easy. Anything less than this, this is easy uh, monetary policy. This is tight <coughs> monetary policy. Look where we are. Look where inflation is. We're not even close to dealing with inflation, even with rate hikes. And we're still running QE, by the way. <laughs> and we still have ZERP. And then it's, it's, it's maddening. It's maddening. But let's blame supply chains. Last time we were even close to this, and my target was here. This was my target, right? Last time we were down here, what happened? Inflation. This is 75, right? What happened in the 80s? Inflation. What's happening now? Inflation. Let the data do the talking. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. It's, it, that's the nice thing about the truth. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. It's self-evident. Let's look at the uh, U.S. family income in real terms, ad inflation adjusted. Okay, this is Nixon, the Nixon shock here. Stagflation, Black Monday, dot com, great financial crisis. Look where we are now. It's not benef th These deficits are not benefiting the common man. So when he's telling you that, well, you know, deficits from the government are non-government savings, well, for who? Not for you and me. <laughs> and this is all artificial. We were just sitting home and the government just helicoptered money to us. Right? And now it's crashing. Crashing. So what's he talking about? How much more deficits should we have? Eight trillion not enough? What is it, 20 we need? 30, 40? I don't know. Give me a number. Running surpluses? Where? <laughs> I don't see no surpluses. Real disposable income. Psych. Right back down. Okay. Now we can make an argument. Okay. We can make an argument that, hey, you know what? It's, it's on a normal trajectory for now. But it's still pointing downwards. This was fuckery. These are stimulus. This is not normal. This is what caused inflation. You just give people money, they're going to go out and spend it. And if you're not working, how are you, you going to produce something? You can't. And you end up with monetary inflation. Blame it on supply chain. It's much easier. It's not the cause. The cause is the $8 trillion of deficits. Look at car sales. They're signaling a recession. Okay? Nobody's buying cars. Too expensive. And you're going to raise interest rates? Okay. We need more deficits. 
Mm, okay. And that's that's the, that's real literally what they're saying. They're saying, well, we have an inflation, so we sh we should print more to offset for that inflation. What? <laughs> what? They are delusional. But people believe these things, unfortunately. Medium sell price for houses. Unbelievable. It's going vertical. You think that's going to last? Can it last? Wages can't support it. It can't last, right? So what happens when it comes down? Somebody's going to have to eat those prices, those losses, and, trillion, and you know it's going to be billions and billions of dollars. Let's take a look at loans and leases. This, this little small little thing here, <laughs> small anyway. Okay, got euphoric, small little pullback. You know what this is? The great financial crisis. Everybody was pulling their hair out. You know what this is? COVID. Okay, <laughs> that's COVID, right? And now it's starting to go back up again. You think that's going to last if we start raising interest rates? Good luck. <laughs> Good luck with that, okay? And that's the problem with deficit spending. You, you deficit spend so much, you paint yourself into a corner, you get the commodity price inflation, you end up with inflation, then you can't print as much. Then you say, no, no, we have to print more to offset the inflation, which creates more inflation, then you end up in a situation where the government cannot deficit spend as much as they could before, uh, because you never know when that threshold is crossed, right? It's unknowable. Uh, and then you end up in a situation where you have to raise rates, but when you raise rates, what are you going to do? You're going to suppress the private money creation. And when you start suppress suppressing the private money creation, because uh, the yield curve is starting to flatten out, uh, and at the same time, you're c you're causing the uh, debt servicing to increase as a percentage uh, of your disposable income. You end up in a very bad place, and that's the problem. That's why we've been bitching. That's why I was saying back in 2000, when was it, 18, 19, whenever they had the tax cuts, that okay, we're going to have tax cuts with 3.4 percent unemployment. Everybody's working, and what do they expect? They're going to get what? 2% inflation? <laughs> you're not going to squeeze more out of the productive economy than what you're already getting. So if you're going to give a tax cut, it's the same thing as a deficit increase. You're not going to create more economic growth. You're going to create inflation. And then COVID hit. And then, you know, the floodgates of fucking money opened up. And we end up with inflation. Everybody's like, oh, my God, what happened? Oh, it's transitory. Oh, it's supply chain. Oh, let me own this. Yeah, I knew this was coming. After the fact, everybody's an expert. Everybody's going to tell you how and why. <laughs> Before, they won't tell you anything. And it only, it, it only shows you how ridiculous MMT is, and, and, and Mosler, and Kelton, and Mike Mousy Boy, and Norman, and all the other clowns. They don't know what they're doing. They never saw inflation coming. They never had a plan for inflation. And they're, they're a one-trick pony that they're going to promise you all these free things. They're going to make you all rich. They'll just print, 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 and everything will be okay. Obviously, that's not the way it works. Uh, people are starting to pick up on that. Uh, and it's going to be a lot more uh, in, in the coming years as people realize that inflation is not going to go away. Yeah, there'll be a statistical, you know, uh, numeric uh, adjustment in, in, in the rate of growth. But that's not going to change anything. Okay, there's still going to be inflation. And I guarantee you, in a few months, when the year-over-year -year number starts to, you know, just settle into that high inflation, and it's not going to show a rate, uh, uh, a year-over-year -year rate of, of, of growth the same as it's showing now, that they'll be like, see, it's the government deficits, uh, they're too low. I guarantee you that's what they're going to say. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this, and I'm going to repost this. In a few months, and unfortunately, they're going to they're convince a lot of laymen that, oh my God, yeah, we do need that. The, our problem is not enough deficits. Depending on how bad inflation is going to get. Anyway, that's it for this video. I, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know if I, if I made sense to anybody. I don't know if this is too technical for people. Uh, I don't know if it's above your heads or whatever. But I hope at least few of you guys get what I'm saying, understand why this is nonsense, and, uh, you know, 
leave a comment below. Let me know. All right. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.